Hello everyone, welcome to the Firebase tutorial series. So today we're going to learn how we can add document. But for that, I will go to the create post page using this button. And now I have three input, one for title, content and text for comma separated values. Let's see the code for it. So if I go to the app, then the create post directory and then page.jsx. Now let me quickly explain the app directory structure. So now if you want to create a page, you need to create a directory inside your app directory. And then you need to create a page.jsx file. And that will be rendered as your page. You can also add a layout.js if you want. Previously on pages router, you could have just created a separate file inside the pages directory like create post.jsx, but that won't work here. So inside this page.jsx file, we have this add post form component and this entire component is actually a server component and this add post form component is also a server component because all the components are server component by default. If you want to use client component, you have to use use client. So here we are using chakra UI components. We have added three inputs and I have added two buttons also but commented out we will use later in the tutorial series. Now what is actually a server component? A server component is actually a component that's rendered on the server and optionally that can be cached. And in server component you just only send HTML or the UI to the client but not the JavaScript. So your components won't be interactive. However, you can use some basic interaction like, like typing inside the input, clicking on a link and so on. And on the other hand, client components that can be rendered on the client or can be rendered on the server. But when the UI is sent to the client, the JavaScript is also sent. So your component will be interactive and you will do all the cool stuff that you can do with JavaScript. And server components obviously comes with limitations. Server components are not that interactive. You don't get access to browser APIs. You don't get to use the use state or any other React hooks because these functionalities require JavaScript, but we're not using JavaScript for the server components. And the benefits are data fetching. You don't have to send a request to a separate server. All the server side logic can be done inside the component. You have better security. The component can be cached with the data. It reduces the bundle size, makes your initial page load faster, good for SEO, and it also supports React streaming. Now, the explanation might not be 100% accurate, but it gives you a basic idea to get started. I can keep talking more about this, but we should focus more on the Firebase Firestore instead of server component versus client component, and you can always learn about them from the documentation and then you also have something called server action which we will also use later in this video so a server action is basically some asynchronous actions that can be executed on the server like adding data or removing data to the database instead of manually sending that data from client to the server and server does all those stuff you can use this with server components and also you can use it client components. This is very useful for form submission. However, this can be also done with event listeners. So we have this form and this submit button should trigger a server action which will add a new document to our database. For that, you need to create a server action. Since this is a server component, we cannot declare the server action function inside our component. We need to declare the function in a totally separate file. So for that, I will create another directory, utils and firebase.js. And here we need to add use server to let Next.js know that this will contain server actions. So I will create a function const add post. And now we can export it. Now to add data to our Firestore database, we need to 
reference a location in our database where we want to add a data. So we want to add a new document to our collection. So we should create a reference to our collection and the collection is posts. To create a collection reference, we can use the collection method. Then we need to pass the DB variable from the config file. And then we need to specify the path to our collection and the path is just post. So we can store that in a variable. Now we need to use the add doc function for adding a document and we can pass collection refs. And the second argument is going to be the data that we want to store. So it should be an object. Now, how do we get the data, the form data from our server action? Now the server action actually takes an argument, which is actually the form data. And the form data is actually an object and you need to use the get method to get the actual data from an input field. So I want to set a title. So I will use form data dot get, and then you need to pass the input name, which is title. In order this to work, you need to make sure that in the input field, you have set the name attribute, otherwise it won't work. And then I want the content, and then tags, and Copilot has given me the exact code that I want to add. Now, a post can be created by a user and the user can have multiple posts. So there is actually a relation and uh, this relation we call one to many because one user can have multiple posts. To have this relation, we need to set a user so that we can know that which post is created by which user. So I can add a user but we're not gonna store any kind of string number or an array or an object. We're gonna store our reference. See, if I show you the console, if I try to add a field, the data types that we can pass are these, and we also have a reference. And this reference is actually our document path. It can live anywhere inside the collections. So the document path would be something like users slash then this and then we can add it now to create a reference to a document we need to use the doc function first we need to pass the db and then the path so the path will be posts and then you can pass another string which will be our user id now how do we get the user id if you have seen the previous video, we have stored the user ID to our cookies. I can show you again. So this is the user ID that we stored in the cookies. So to get the cookie value, we need to use the cookie function. So const user ID and we can use the cookies function and we need to chain the get method. And you need to pass the cookie name, user ID. And one more thing, in Firebase, when you need to pass some kind of path, like a path to a collection or path to a document, you have two options. You can add it like this, where you have passed multiple string as arguments, or you can also do something like this. So post slash, then the user ID. So that will also work. You can use multiple arguments or you can use a single string with slash. But I'm gonna use this format. And this will give us a document reference, which is our user refs. And now we can directly pass to this user field. So our add post server action is done. We can go to the form. Here we need to pass an action attribute Instead of on submit handler, you need to pass that to the action prop. So action is going to be add post. And one more thing I forgot is that this add doc function is actually asynchronous. So we need to await this also. And it will give us the document reference 
the reference to the new document and I can also do a console log. So let's add some data. Test, test content and I can add tag and now let's hit submit. Um, we are getting an error. Okay, so I made a mistake. So this user ID is actually now an object, but we need a string. So we need to use the value. So now let's go back. Actually, I will move this uh, tab to my editor workspace. Yeah, now I'm good. Now I can add title. And now if I hit submit, and now if I go back to the terminal, you can see we have this big object, which is actually the document reference. And if I go to the privacy console, and if I just refresh, now you see the posts collection with a document. Now, when you create a new document or you create a new post, you might want to redirect the user to the post page after that. To do that, you should use the redirect function for the server actions. So I will remove the console log and then redirect. And it should come from next slash navigation. And the route should be uh, not post. It should be post slash docref.id. So this document reference also has an ID, which is the document ID. And uh, now if I hit submit again, it should redirect me to the post page. And now I am in the post page with the documents ID. But it says post not found because we haven't added the logic to get a single document. So that's why it says post not found, but we will do that in the series. So this is how you can add a single document to your Firestore database. In the next video, we will learn how to add multiple documents with a single request in Firebase Firestore. So that's it for today. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.